Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 6 of season 4 of our F1 2020 My Team Karima where today we're here back for the Spanish Grand Prix. Now obviously if you missed out on the last video that went live a couple of days ago from Zanvor, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out. Zanvor really did throw everything at us over the course of that race. There will of course as well be spoilers in 3, 2, 1 now. So last time out then... At the Dutch Grand Prix, Alex Albon became the first man of the season to win back-to-back -back Grand Prix here. Having a fantastic start and a fantastic run of form gives him a 15-point lead as we head into round 6 of the World Championship there. We're still P2, despite not having a single race victory to our name just yet. And then Valtteri Bottas third ahead of George Russell, one point clear of Daniel Ricciardo. And it has not been the start to the year that Lewis Hamilton would have wanted all the way down in 6th place there. The same can be said, actually... For the team there, you can see Red Bull on top of the Constructors World Championship, Mercedes and then ourselves all the way down in P3 here. So not been the best start in the world, but heading into the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend, we have got a couple of upgrades actually in the works. You can see a durability and aero and two chassis upgrades, uh, two durability upgrades in fact will hopefully give us a little bit of a helping hand there. You know, we've, we've come onto the season a bit slow, I'll be honest, hopefully today... We'll start to get back towards the front. And when or oh when will we finally get that first Grand Prix victory? Let's dive in then here to qualifying. So here we are then, ready for round six of the season here at the Spanish Grand Prix qualifying session. It's always been a bit of a weird track for me in recent F1 games. I'm not a fan of this circuit. I never have been. I do prefer the new version of the Spanish Grand Prix. It does make it a lot better of a circuit. But on the other hand, pace around here on F1 2020 has for the most part actually been quite decent. So we'll wait and see as to how this goes here today. Uh, we're going obviously out on the mediums, as we do every single qualifying session for our first Q2 run. But yeah, we really need a good result today. I've been struggling to get to grips with the car in the opening few races this season. Uh, consistency has been good, but yeah, just one or two slip-ups over the course of a Grand Prix has potentially cost us a couple of race victories as well in the early stages of this World Championship. So hopefully soon uh, we'll get sort of that nice clean run. We might get our first win as well if everything slots into place and then from then on we can sort of never look back and see what we can do this season. But so far the slaps felt alright, not brilliant but not too bad either as we head down into towards Sector 3 where a few tents up on Max Verstappen who I'm guessing hasn't done a representative all the way down in 7th place there but we'll wait and see just coming through the final sector. If we can get through into Q3 on these mediums I'll be rather happy. We just run a little bit wide through the final sector of corners there. Dance through the final chicane. Try and get the power down at the final corner. Up towards start finish line. It's going to be a 1.13.6. Three tenths off Hamilton, who's on softs, and just behind George Russell on mediums. So it seems like we're on the pace. Mercedes is always quick over one lap. Our car, though, I'd argue, is still one of the best on race trim. That's a good sign. Here we go then, back out once again in Q2, right at the end of the session here. We're going to try and be one of the last cars onto a run, because I'm a little bit worried. Sat there in P8, it's a bit precarious, I'll be honest, at this late stage of the session there. What we're going to do is obviously go out for this run. We should hopefully be a whole lot faster, but if we don't need to improve, then we'll probably bail out of it in the final couple of corners there. Let's just get it nice and tidy through the first couple of turns. Make sure we don't make any mistakes early on here. But yeah, it's a bit more of a precautionary measure. If we need to improve, then we can do. Uh, George Russell and Daniel Ricciardo actually both a little bit safer on their medium rubber at the moment. So once again, it looks like Ricciardo might have finally shown up to one of these Grand Prix weekends. I know a couple of you were saying it thought it was Albon. Uh, sorry, Max Verstappen dressed up as Alex Albon in that second Red Bull car. But qualifying is now complete, so everyone is coming towards the end of their final runs here. I think a couple of people might be able to go out for one more shot. So actually go purple through the middle sector, but I don't think... Oh, we're down to 10th, so we do still need to keep on it. Could this... Oh, no, we're definitely down to 11th. Right, we're going to have to finish this lap then. At least we went out for it. I would have hated to have been out in Q2 once again. Already happened once this season for ourselves and once for Lewis Hamilton through the final corner. 
get the power down up towards the start finish line. It is going to be a 1 minute 12. And where does that leave us at the end of Q2? That's going to put us third. So, yeah, again, that's all right. We're safely through into Q3. That's the most important thing. Would have preferred to have been on the soft, uh, the harder compounded tyres. But having a look then at the race, uh, the qualifying results, 27 thousandths of a second to separate myself, Alban, and Valtteri Bottas there. So the top three in the championship, 27 thousandths of a second separating us there. Ricardo does sneak through on those medium compounded tyres there. But I think... Uh, is it? No, Carlos Sainz in his home Grand Prix does get through into Q3 this weekend now as well. They're alongside Pierre Gasly. No major surprises though, so we're going to get two shots at this. Let's not waste them. Here we are then, ready for Q3 around the Spanish Grand Prix circuit. Like I said, we're only going to get a couple of runs at this on the fresh compounds of tyres. So hopefully we can set a good banker on this first time round here. But I think legitimately we do have a good chance at another pole position here. Hopefully the race pace is a bit stronger this weekend as well. And maybe, just maybe, this can finally be where we end our wind round since, what, Brazil last season? Doesn't seem like too many Grand Prix, but when you're a two-time reigning Formula 1 world champion, going six races into a season without a Grand Prix win, doesn't look too good on the old resume there. Through the first sector, though, nice and tidily. Anyway, coming down the towards the bottom of the hill there through one of my favourite corners on the lap the infamous turn 9 around this Spanish Grand Prix not quite flat out like it was last season there we actually get a warning for track limits but on the anchors at the 100 metre board there try and keep it nice and tidy over the kerbs one more set to go then around this Spanish GP circuit we need to try and keep it nice and tidy to the chequered flag. Breaking down, trying not to snag any brakes, anything like that. All oh, running a bit wide through the final corner. That won't have cost us too much time. Down towards finish line then. It's going to be a 12-8 again. 77 thousandths off Alexander Albon, who's provisional pole. And just behind our teammate as well. Things are looking close. Here we go then. One more chance to try and get ourselves right up towards the front of the field. Then Bottas... Out of nowhere has managed to do a 12-2. So he's currently provisional pole by about half a second. And he's going to require an absolute world of a lap. If we want to try and get close to the time set by Valtteri here. But anyway, down towards turn one then. Let's just go into a bit of sweat mode. See if we can get the lap absolutely nailed. For the final time in qualifying here. A good run through the first couple of corners. Up the hill through turn three. Shortest run up in towards turn four. We should be able to see if other people have improved if we can get sort of a 12-5 I'll probably be quite happy in all honesty because that might be enough to put us on the front row of the grid here good run as we head down the hill break it down through the next corner try not to get too much wheel spin don't really want to look where we are currently on the grid there as we get a good run through turn 9 down to P7 so people are improving at the moment, bit of a snag break through there. Hopefully we can roll on the power nice and early on the exit though. As we head now up the hill in towards the final sector. Definitely a little bit more time to find through here over our previous run. Oh, a big, big chunk of wheel spin. But we do keep it together. Try and avoid getting on the throttle too early out of the final corner. We have hooked up the lap. That is going to be a 12-4. And that's going to be P2 on the grid there. We were never going to get Valtteri Bottas. Happy that we were able to perform right when it mattered in the end there. And yeah, very, very happy to start on the front row in the end. With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Bottas, Mr. Monaco and Lewis Hamilton. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow. So make sure you join us then. Well, there we go then. Valtteri Bottas was obviously able to hold on to pole position there. But I thought we'd be sort of a tenth or two comfortable ahead of the likes of Hamilton and Albon there. But only 20 thousandths of a second ahead of my teammate. Eight hundredths ahead of Albon there as well. So everyone did really improve right towards the end of that session there. But it's P2 on the grid ready for the Spanish Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas starting from the pole. Can we finally get this first win? Let's dive in then here to the Spanish Grand Prix. The Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? 
That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, a track that will certainly force the drivers to push themselves. It consists of a very impressive main straight going into turn one. It's a straight that also offers a DRS zone, so it's likely to be a hot spot for overtakes. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? They've been avoiding mistakes and have had solid pace, so it's been a good season so far, but whether they can keep that up long term remains to be seen. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and Mr. Monaco completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Albon, George Russell and Ricardo, Leclerc, Gasly, Sainz and Max Verstappen, Perez, Kvyat, Esteban Ocon and Norris, Raikkonen, Magnussen, Nick de Vries and Jordan King. Matsushita, Giovinazzi, Stroll, and Nicholas Latifi. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Jeff, we are not aiming for a top 10 this weekend. Here we are then on the grid, ready for round six of the season from the Spanish Grand Prix. And yeah, we have one thing on our mind today. We want that silverware, we want the trophy. We want to walk away from the Spanish Grand Prix with the full 25 points here. Going to be a very, very overcast Grand Prix. Obviously, the one versus the two stop as well is going to be very, very interesting to see how that pans out as well over the course of today's Grand Prix. But I'm excited. Hopefully, you guys are as well. We're going to try the soft, medium, medium. We might see if we can make soft, medium, softs work over the course of this race. Oh, excuse me, but only time will tell. We're ready then. On the grid, let's just do this thing. Starting on the front row alongside Valtteri Bottas for the sixth race of this World Championship. Five red lights, and it is lights out, and away we go there. Bottas responding rather well to the lights, but then gets a huge dump truck, a wheel spin on the run down towards turn one. Hamilton, though, has responded perfectly as we head down in towards the first corner, and someone's completely rammed into the back of us there. Who on earth was that? through the first corner that completely went to the back of us. I think that was Alex Albon. No idea what happened there, but that sent us all the way down to ninth place off the start of the Grand Prix. They're almost 10th place for a brief moment as Max Verstappen tries to have a look up the inside there. What on earth was that from someone behind us? We'll try and keep the nose up the inside of young Maxi Boy. And we do hold on to P9 of this Grand Prix there, but no idea what that was. Surely someone... Has got some front wing damage there. I think either Albon got way too aggressive on the brakes or George Russell and Charles Leclerc got into the back of him. Something must have happened there. And unfortunately, we're the only one that seems to get completely caught out by it as we head down in towards the final corners of the opening lap. We've got Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tauri. Try and get round him. Not someone we want to be battling with all too long in this Grand Prix. Well, one to watch today is definitely Daniel Ricciardo here. He might be able to make the one-stop work around this circuit so I'm certainly intrigued to see what he's going to be able to do the Australian there but there is Albon into the pit lane there so he definitely picked up some front wing damage going into the back of us in towards that first corner there so we're back a bit of P7 by the end of lap one there but a bit of a crazy start then uh, Valtteri Bottas leads the way ahead of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell there but yeah now we got to try and recover our positions Lap three then, Daniel Ricciardo still just sat in front of us there as Carlos Sainz appears to be struggling a bit with traction in the back of his McLaren there. Someone is having issues though further back. I think he's one of the back markers, so I don't think we're going to lose too much sleep worrying about it. Let's have a look. It appears to be one of the Alfa Romeos. I'm going to guess it's Matsushita out of yet another Grand Prix. And we get a safety car just as Daniel Ricciardo brake checks us. What are we going to do now? A five second penalty. I don't often do this, I'm going to be honest. But, yeah, that is a bit ridiculous. A five-second penalty there for Daniel Ricciardo brake-checking us halfway through a corner. And there is the safety car again, so that's not going to change anything. Uh, but, yeah, that always seems a bit ridiculous, the way the AI just suddenly stop on the racing line there. In terms of strat, though, team on us to pit now. We may as well go along with that. This could screw Daniel Ricciardo, actually, in this Grand Prix. He will get track position... But it's also going to mean that a lot of the people are going to be a lot closer to him. 
Olsen into the pits as well as pretty much everyone else in this Grand Prix. We're obviously going to dive it in as well here. Try and make sure we get it stopped on the dot there. You can see Mercedes having to double stack. Ferrari probably going to be double stacking as well there. But I think that was Bottas getting caught out just a little bit through that. A lot of the cars towards the rear of the field though are going to stay out there. Obviously pretty much everyone else opting to start on the uh, medium compound tyres. 3.9 seconds stop. We're going to be all the way down to P18 here in this Grand Prix. So it's not been... A particularly brilliant pit stop there. We do start ahead of Pierre Gasly, though. I don't think we've lost any places, but Russell and Sainz still in front. So getting ready then to go green here from the Spanish Grand Prix. Things are probably going to be quite action-packed over the next few laps here. Effectively now, I think pretty much everyone is one-stopping between now and the chequered flag. So we are actually in, yeah, legitimate P18 here at this stage of the race. Ricardo leads the way. This is probably his best shot at a race victory that he's had all season long. But our race was pretty much turned on its head at the start. And it's been made even more difficult as we get ready to go green through the final chicane. Not often do we find ourselves this far down the order. But it is green flag racing once again. A lot of wheel spin as we head out the final corner here. We might actually be under a bit of pressure from Pierre Gasly just behind us here. Surely he's not going to be able to get a run on us. Look at that, Pierre Gasly. Going for a move in towards turn one. Is he going to be able to make anything work of it? We're going to be a bit later on the brakes. Oh, a bit of contact. I did give him a bit of a squeeze through the first corner there, but he holds on to it. And we hold on to P18 now. Rather aggressive defending of the restart. But we've held on to P18. Now we've got Russell and Sainz battling out just in front of us. As we've got the likes of Williams, Alfa Romeo's, Haas all about to be in the way. Coming down onto the back straight once again. You can see one of the Ferraris going for a move as everyone else. Constantine is up just a little bit. We'll try and have a look around the outside of our old teammate George Russell there. A little bit of a tight squeeze coming from Mercedes' newest recruit. But we do get up the inside. And we now move ourselves up back into P17 of the Grand Prix. The first of the backmarker cars is young Nicholas Latifi here. Been with Williams for a very, very long time now here in the My Team universe, but can we get a good run out of the final corner on him and Carlos Sainz? I don't think we have particularly. See Latifi going defensive on a homeboy Carlos as they head down in towards the first corner here. Who's going to come out on top of this one? We're going to try and slot past the Williams as well through the first corner. And yeah, that Williams definitely doesn't have the same amount of grip. As the likes of ourselves and the McLaren do there. Back up into P16 then. We actually got a warning for track limits going through there. But next up then. Heading up through the infamous turn 9. We've got a good run on Carlos Sainz. Here. Can we potentially look for a move in towards the hairpin? Yes we do late on the brakes. Up the inside of the McLaren. And we're making good progress. We're already back up into P15 of this Grand Prix. You can see the likes of Jordan King and Magnussen just up the road there. Stroll find himself starting on the back row. I'm sure his race pace will be a little bit better. Think about having a look up the inside of Charles Leclerc. Show the nose, but Charles not having any of it as we try to get the power out of the final turn. Yeah, I'm going to P15. Getting a good run actually out of turn three this time round on Charles Leclerc here. Oh, Ferrari just breaking a little bit earlier than I was expected, but somehow... We still find the room around the outside. It might give us the inside as we head down the hill there. Jordan King locking up just up in front there. A stroll rather slow on the exit of the corner. We're going to switch to the inside of the racing point man. He tries to turn across us as we get the power down off the exit of the corner there. But it's a double overtake. And that's us up in a P13 there as Giovinazzi seems to be holding up this train at the moment. As one of the Haskells tries to hang on to the group in front. Getting a good run out of the final turn on Jordan King. He's also got some ERS from the cars in front of him here. But hopefully we should be able to get a good run up the inside of the Alfa Romeo into the first corner there. The Haas of Magnussen applying some pressure to Giovinazzi as we make the move work. Up at a 12th place of this Grand Prix. Can we get a good run around the outside of Magnussen through turn three? We've already pulled off one move like this earlier on in the race. Can we get later on the brakes? Do what we did to Charles Leclerc just a lap ago. Yes, we can. And we're up another two spots then, just outside the points now. It's only Giovinazzi separating us from that points-paying position there. Not often do we see Williams running in the top ten, but 
hopefully it's not going to be for much longer either as we try to get a good run up the hill here. Giovinazzi being very, very sketchy with his defending. Not too sure what that's all about, mate, but hopefully we should be able to get the run down this straightaway. And yeah, we do slot ourselves back up now, finally, into P10 here, but we've performed a lot of overtakes, and now we've got about five seconds of clear air. Let's get our head down and focus. We've got more yellow flags out through the first corner. That appears to be one of the Renaults, so not too sure what's happened there. I think that's either Esteban Ocon or Kimi Raikkonen going slowly. Are we going to see our second retirement? Yes, we do. Ocon out of the Spanish Grand Prix there, and he was running in a really good position early on in this race. That is going to put Giovinazzi back up into the points here, but heartbreak for the Frenchman. Coming to the end of lap 13 then, although I want to believe in... Oh, God, that's not what I want to believe in. That's a rather scary moment. Uh, although I want to believe in an Antonio Giovinazzi masterclass, I'm not optimistic it's going to happen here today and he's not going to get some points. But Ricardo, first man into the pits, he's not actually going to come out all too far behind us in this Grand Prix. So Danny Rick's basically got a pit stop margin over the likes of myself at the moment. We were closing up to the back of Nick DeFries there, but I think it's going to be another lap or so before we get an opportunity now. All over the back of Nick DeFries now as we head through the final couple of corners. It appears that Raikkonen... He's actually causing a bit of train as well as all. We do the same thing again at the final turn. This time round, though, De Vries and Lando Norris both into the pit lane here, as well as Danny uh, Kvyat and Sergio Perez there. So we're back in the fourth place, then, of this Grand Prix. We've all got a pit, though, again, and Ricardo is only three seconds back. We need to stop bottling it out of the final corner. That would be a good way to start. But this race is not over just yet. Bottas trying to look around the outside of Kimi Raikkonen here to retake the lead for the first time since the safety car. And I think Bottas has done it. Hamilton might try and follow his former teammate through, but cannot quite find a way past the finish man there through the final couple of corners of the lap. Raikkonen, though, does dive into the pits here. Could we get a run on our teammate Lewis Hamilton out of the final corner? Back into the podium places for the first time since the first corner in this Grand Prix. There we've got a good run on Hamilton, but we're nowhere near going to be close enough to get to him. Now it's a horrible question of do we all work together or do we just try and get around these guys and hope we can close up to Ricardo? He hasn't actually gained any time on us. So maybe those hearts not looking as strong as I thought. Oh, Bottas and Hamilton then into the pit to the end of lap 16 here. So we're not even halfway into this Grand Prix. We just take over it now as we set a new fast lap of the Grand Prix. Where on earth did that come from? We'll, we'll have it. But wasn't quite expecting that as we get into the second half of today's race. George Russell goes a couple of tenths faster nonetheless. But now we've got a couple of laps. We're planning on pitting the end of lap 19 to go on to fresh mediums. I just don't believe the hards are going to work around here. But Ricardo. Looking good at the moment. Russell, I think, has still got a pit again. So it could still be a Ricardo perez Kvyat top three. Spain, because of this weird one-slash-two-stop strategy, always gives us some weird and wonderful results. And just remember, last season, both Red Bulls were lapped in this race. So what a turnaround that would be if they win this today. Coming down in towards the final couple of corners of lap 19 here. The gap to Ricardo has pretty much stayed even over these last few, but we're still doing well at the moment. The pace has hung on in there with these mediums, but I don't think they've got all too much grip left to give as we head through the final sector of the lap. Trying to just get the car rotated through, make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidily. <laughs> Into the pit lane there. That was rather aggressive on the entry, but we have held on to it. Ricardo is going to re-inherit the lead of this Grand Prix, looking to try and go to the end, but we've got 13 laps to try and recover this, and just looking at the mini-map, I'm wondering if we can come out ahead of our teammate, and I think, is it Carlos Sainz to the McLaren? I don't know for sure. 2.2 second stop is not too shabby at all. It is Lando Norris, in fact, who's up into sixth place in this Grand Prix here, and we do, in fact, stay comfortably ahead of both himself and my teammate here, just behind Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix, but we're on fresher, quicker rubber than pretty much everyone around us here. Let's just see what we can still get out of this Grand Prix. Towards the end of lap 21, just 12 to go then here 
from the Spanish Grand Prix. And I think Danny Kvyat, he's had a very good race up to now. And I'm sure he'd love a podium to add to his F1 resume. We set a new fast lap of the Grand Prix. But Bottas and myself are hunting him down there. Hamilton goes even faster. So maybe we're going to have to watch our mirrors before the end of the Grand Prix as well there. But yeah, Danny Kvyat trying to hang on to this podium position at the moment. He has got a rather quick car for this kind of circuit. He's run a bit wide through turn three. But surely... He's not going to be able to defend from us too for much longer. We've just got so much more grip than these guys around us at the moment as we head through the final sector of the lap. Yeah, you can see almost trying to have a look up the inside of Valtteri Bottas through the final chicane, but try and get the power down as early as possible at the final turn there. Bottas clearly aware of us and how good a run we've got out of that final corner, but he's gaining rapidly on Danny Kvyat as well there and being carried along from the slipstream. They're going to go side by side in towards the first corner. We've just got to try and guess where we want to be for when this all goes wrong. Try and get a bit of a switch back on Danny Kvyat there. He's lost one place to Bottas. He's about to lose a second to myself. A bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact between myself and the Alpha Towers. He tries to be aggressive, but we chop across the, his nose. And now Bottas is up into P3. We're up into P4. Hopefully... Bottas isn't going to suddenly catch a second wind, and we can try and get around the Mercedes. Let's see now if we can get a good run out of the final corner on young Valtteri Bottas here. Are we going to be able to get a good run? We go purple through the final sector. That's obviously a good sign. And yeah, Bottas, I don't think there's going to be much he can do. He does go defensive on us, but we're going to be a little bit later on the brakes through the first corner, given the room, unlike what we did to Gasly earlier on. And we're now over to P3 of the Grand Prix. Now, Bottas tries to get the nose back up the inside as a look. I can't quite make anything happen there. We've got four seconds up the road to Sergio Perez. That should be catchable. The bigger question is, can we catch 13 to Ricardo with 10 laps to go? That doesn't seem so likely. Five laps to go then here from the Spanish Grand Prix. And we are now all over the back of Sergio Perez here. Hopefully a nice simple move. Try and move ourselves up into P2 of this race they're getting good drive out of the final corner despite a little bit of wheel spin Sergio Perez no DRS again it's been a valiant effort by the racing point man but it's just not going to be close enough at the end of the day they're around the outside through the first corner and back up now into P2 of the Spanish Grand Prix there the gap to Ricardo doesn't look good at the moment I'll be honest but you know me we don't give up in these races if he gets an issue late on Maybe there's still a chance right at the end of this race there. But to be honest, Bottas versus Perez versus Hamilton might become a reality at the end of this Grand Prix. They all seem to be closing in on each other at pretty even margins at the moment. So we shall wait and see about that. Meanwhile for us though, again, it looks like it's going to be another P2 at the end of the day. But if any of you think I could have got Ricardo here, that one-stop strategy... Just so overpowered. I think, to be honest, this has probably been our best Sunday performance of the season so far. But Ricardo looks set to become our fifth different winner in six races. And then to the final lap here from the Spanish Grand Prix. Our mediums have definitely started to hit the cliff right at the end of this race. I guess trying to do so many quick laps in succession has played its toll on these tyres at the end of the day. There, Ricardo appears to have pulled away just a little bit. In the end there, we've got Hamilton and Bottas not far behind us. Sergio Perez, he was hanging on in there. Bottas got one good run on him, and then Hamilton was able to follow him by as well there. So Perez, again, another valiant effort. The same can be said for Danny Kvyat, who still looks like he's going to be able to hold on for P6, but certainly isn't too shabby at the end of the day. The biggest question I have is how have Williams still ended up last? How, just how bad is that car that they were on for points early on here, and yet Giovinazzi... And Latifi is still right at the rear of the field at the end of the day there. But Ricardo's going to come through the final couple of corners. We've been talking about how he hasn't turned up in the early stages of this season. But now it is clear. Red Bull have a car and a team that can challenge finally in Season 4. And like I said, this time last season, they finished a lap down in this Grand Prix. But Ricardo's going to come through for his first race victory into Monaco 2018 there. We're going to come through, though, with Bottas all over our gearbox for another P2 there. Our third P2 in six races. When are we getting that victory? Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance.
another Spanish Grand Prix is over, and what a special race it was. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. So let's review the updated driver's standings. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Well, Crofty, Daniel Ricciardo would have to be my driver of the day. It's less about what he did right, but how little he did wrong. Perfect driving. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull pulled further ahead in the standings. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Um, I'm not sure what on earth Croft is smoking, thinking 13th and 16th is a strong weekend for Ferrari. They're another absolute disaster for the Maranello-based squad. But it is Daniel Ricciardo, like we said, taking his first race victory in what that is theoretically pretty much six years in Formula One there. Finally back on top for Red Bull. You know, it's all been about Albon so far this year, but Ricardo proving that he can battle with the very best as well. There we come through for P2 ahead of Valtteri Bottas and our teammate Lewis Hamilton there. So a good result, actually, for 2-2 two two Motorsport at the end of the day there. Perez and Kvyat, again, a fantastic job on the one stop there in fifth and sixth. ahead of George Russell, who takes fastest lap point and seventh place at the end of the day there. Lando Norris, Kimi Räikkönen, and Nick De Vries for Haas. Picking up the final points paying position there. That is not good for Williams as well there. But yeah, another crazy result here from the Spanish Grand Prix. And if I'm not mistaken, that means that four different teams have won this Grand Prix over the first four seasons of this series there. Obviously, Lando Norris took that historic race victory back in season one. The first and only McLaren, I think, win to date in the My Team career mode there. I can't remember if it was Mercedes or Ferrari in Season 2. Obviously, we won the race in Season 3. And now Daniel Ricciardo for Red Bull in Season 4 there. But having a look further down the order, like I said, the big surprise is then Charles Leclerc 13th, Alex Albon 14th, and uh, Max Verstappen all the way down in 16th place there at the end of the day, as well as Giovinazzi and Latifi at the rear of the field there. And obviously, Ocon and Matsushita not making it to the checkered flag. That means World Championship, though. Consistency is still proving to be key in the early stages of this season there. We re-inherit the lead of the Drivers World Championship still without that coveted race victory there. Just three points ahead of Albon there. Ten points ahead of Bottas as Ricardo gets back into title contention there. Just 11 points off the top in fourth place there. George Russell, a perfect weekend back now. So still theoretically in the championship hunt there. And Hamilton, 35 points back there. Seems to be the worst of the top three big teams there. Max Verstappen holding on to seventh ahead of Sainz Leclerc there. Perez gets himself inside the top ten ahead of Lando Norris there. And Kvyat gets some good points on the board ahead of Ocon as well as Raikkonen jumping at Lance Stroll there. Leaves just the likes of Giovinazzi, Matsushita, Magnussen, King and Latifi yet to score points early on in the season there. And constructors wise we move back up into P2 one point ahead of Mercedes there. Red Bull Further solidifying themselves at the top of the championship. They're 21 clear of ourselves. Their Ferrari, no idea how they've been able to pull away from McLaren this weekend. I think that's a bit of a graphical bug there. Alpha Tauri jump Renault, and then Haas and Williams both jump Alfa Romeo there. I think there's some weird and wonderful maths being done by F1 2020. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you did enjoy, do make sure you get yourself subscribed. And yeah, be back soon. Where we head to round seven of the season. It's the jewel in the Formula One crown. Our best shot at a race victory. It's time for the Monaco Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it. 
A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.